even Timon and Zazu and and Pumba who who don't have as much screen time as you wanted are so bloody good. What is Pumba's character Vikram? Uh, that he farts? Yeah, it's is the comic relief, man. Oh yeah, of course, so fleshed out. What a farter he was. Mancha. In a world filled with war, hate, suffering, and Justin Bieber. Two guys fix it all with a battle about a movie. One film, two opinions, one coin, two sides. They feud. You decide. It's time for Film Feud. Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Feud, the podcast where we debate whether top-rated movies should be top-rated. I'm Vidur and I'm Vikram. Hello Vikram. What's up? Ready to feud always. Let's do this. Why don't you tell the good folk what we're doing here? For shizzles, we take a movie from the IMDb Top 250, we toss a coin, heads argues for and tails argues against. Simple. Simple indeed. And the movie we're feuding this week, Disney's 1994 feature The Lion King. Das Vidanya. <laughs> Any other languages you want to throw in to insult Africa? That's why I remember the clearest I know is Russian. What I just said, but it just comes closest to whatever it is in my mind. Racist? No. Racist much? No. Idiot much? Maybe. <laughs> When was the last time you watched this movie? I couldn't tell you, man. If I try to remember, fifteen. Years ago, twenty years ago, maybe you haven't rewatched the Lion King. What's wrong with you? Don't you miss your childhood? I mean, I've seen it multiple times. I'm pretty sure over like eight times, but just in the nineties. Oh, you watched Lion King over eight times, huh? You must love it. As a kid, who didn't? Come on, man. <laughs> it was a good time as a kid, but uh, you know, it's time to evaluate where we're at and. To that note, why don't we get to it? Let's do the coin toss and see which side we'll be feuding. Let's do it. So I'll be tossing the coin. Heads means I argue for the movie, and tails means I argue against. Simple enough. Let's go. And I've got tails. You're already making my point for me. Just that was, that nonsensical was a, music. That was a joyous burst coming out of me. <laughs> there's no way this movie can be bad. There's absolutely no way this movie can be bad. Well, I think there's a lot of ways this movie can be bad. Have you watched any of the other animated features we were in love with? Just because they came on Star movies, they don't hold up, my friend. No, man. I, I'm pretty sure like Bambi and Lion King are like two. Classics in terms of animations that I have hold never up. watched. You never seen Bambi? Bambi, yeah. You're gonna cry, bro. Yeah, so I hear. You you're in for a good crying. No, I doubt it. You know, some of them are just boring. Little Mermaid is boring, kind of. I remember watching Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast when I was a kid and not liking them even then. So yeah, I believe you. But you're not the target audience. The target audience is tiny little girls, which means wait, you are the target audience. A burn. <laughs> <laughs> you a little girl, bro. All right, dude. I mean, whatever, whatever you need to help you get past this coin toss. <laughs> okay, fine. I think watching the movie again should clear it up for me. I doubt it'll hold up. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's do it. But before we begin our episode, a quick shout out to Hub Hopper. Hub Hopper is India's very own podcast app with the largest directory that brings you thousands of unique shows and stories from every imaginable genre. You can now listen to your favorite podcast, Film Feud, on Hub Hopper. That's H U B H O P P E R. So go ahead and download the Hub Hopper app from the Play or App Store today. And if you like it, review it and share it with your friends. With that, let's go watch the movie. Let's go. What a perfect, perfect movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Keep going. I don't need to. It's perfect. That's it's a- perfect. It's perfect. This is the perfect movie. This is. The perfect movie. Frank Coppola can suck a baboon. Frank whatever. Coppola, कुछ नहीं उखाड़ सकता यहाँ पे brother. Nothing he can उखाड़ो. Do you realize that the lion being the king of the jungle is just a phrase? It's just something people say. They actually made lions the king, the monarch of the jungle. Yeah, wait, wait a second. Before we get any deeper here, are you going to apply animal logic 
of how kingdoms or the jungle is actually run or it works and all of that because it's it's a cartoon you I hope you understood that right it's an animated feature film i hold it in a high expectation standard because this is from disney's golden era this is what it was this is what i loved as a kid it's so sad i'm not going to apply any logic to it of course you can't apply any logic to it i'm just saying like apparently they just wanted to make a movie about lions right because lions are cool and they wanted it to be set in africa but the king thing is a little too far also it's part of whole disney's like monarchy push i think there's something to this huh by the way every disney film features like monarchs right and i think it's like probably a metaphor for like disney in itself like you know how disney just kind of owns us just gets it's like surf taxes from us by selling us toys and um i'm not getting sucked into this <laughs> pointless <laughs> argument that you're trying to present here it makes absolutely no sense they're still doing it now black panther's a disney movie it's like a super hit they're pushing the monarch thing there i'm telling you man there's something to this you're wasting precious air time here with absolute shite okay let me just summarize my thoughts firstly shakespeare did it better this hamlet copy is just worthless copy it is a copy it's a rip off it's inspired yeah. more like it like thousands and thousands of other movies and stories out there i'm just saying the bard did it better than these disney buffoons jesus is doing i mean i see what you did there with the buffoons firstly but just because it's inspired by a classic a bard which was written hundreds and hundreds of years ago doesn't mean that oh the bard did it better or this movie did it better there's no comparison it's an inspiration and it takes its own form after that but the movie experience itself i have been privileged enough to watch the lion king on broadway in new york city highest grossing broadway show of all time nobody gives a shit 850 million dollars dude nobody gives a shit i give i watched it and the broadway show did it better i don't doubt that i mean there's a heavy musical influence in this so did you know this movie was a musical before you watched it of course i totally forgot like i knew there were, obviously circle of life but that's almost like an opening number right hakuna matata and i remembered hakuna matata what a wonderful phrase What's but, the nasal thing do is That's like, how that's how young Simba sings. It means no worries for the rest of your days. He's so annoying. We'll get to it. Young Simba problem free. Uh copyright please. Can we, can we <laughs> Oh, okay. I forgot this movie was a musical. So these two numbers that we just sang are still acceptable. The other are just filler tracks that you have to sit through to watch this movie. It's just like a Bollywood movie. It's it's like a musical number or a song or like an item number every 10 minutes and i can't believe i'm saying this this movie is too short it doesn't give you time to absorb anything that happens in it it just jumps into like ek minute bachcha hai ek minute bada ho gaya one moment he's basically like crying over the death of his father the next moment hakuna matata and it just rushes by and the musical numbers don't help oh my god why didn't this movie hold up why did i not get okay. to relive my enough, childhood enough enough all right Firstly this movie is perfect. It's one and a half hours give or take and it's perfect in terms of rushing. I don't think so. I think each character is established perfectly even young Simba, old Simba. They spend so much time fleshing out the young Simba character and how he wants to be the king when he grows up and obviously the old Simba which is the rest of the movie where he's escaping from his troubled past and then finally the whole coming of age thing coming together and then him actually taking over fighting scar and doing all of that each character each main character at least was fleshed out so well even timon and zazu and and pumba who who don't have as much screen time as you wanted are so bloody good what is pumba's character vikram uh, that he farts yeah it is is the comic relief man oh yeah of course so fleshed out what a farter he was the voice acting in the farting my god dude on that note i mean we'll talk about casting obviously when we get to it but I think I think this movie was impeccable in everything all right we were talking about the music earlier sir elton john are you kidding me dude okay why don't we stick to the music okay because i know elton john and hans zimmer just apparently make it some like crazy combo so you think the music has to be good one is the placement of the music itself i do still feel it's rushed one moment scar is all sinister right and then the next moment just like an annoying musical like you know one of those plays that doesn't need music but they force it in there so he'll be sinister but then he has to sing that evil guy song so then it's all like like a broadway show like a musical oh he's like oh i'm evil i'm evil and then he says like and then he's like clicking his fingers maria maria like whatever like it's like <laughs> maria, i don't maria. know it's like lakhayam lakhayam like he's just singing typical filler musical numbers he's like oh if i were an evil man if i were an evil lion la 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 
<laughs> oh, that was fun, man. That was fun. Just, just because of that, this entire feud's uh, worth it. You spoke about Hans Zimmer very casually, and I'm a little appalled. I think he I, treated I know, this movie very casually. In fact, I know you're a big fan, all right. There's no denying it. But of both future Hans Zimmer, yeah. Of Hans Zimmer in general, this is his only. Bloody Oscar! That says something, man. That and says something that, about the Oscars. No, that that the fact that that washed over you and the way you were casually remarking about Hans Zimmer, it's just just shows me that you have absolutely no taste in music or scoring movies or anything like that. It's just something that's there for you. I heard this interview by Hans Zimmer where he was specifically talking about this movie score and how he approached it. He'd done a couple of movies uh, before this movie where he'd actually gone to Africa. One of them was The Power of One. Recorded these African choirs. and try to bring that traditional african sound into the score and the theme of the movie and obviously because of the experience there uh he 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 did such a good job here and the other thing was that he spoke about how he'd lost his father pretty early on and how he wanted to just use the theme and and the score of this movie to sort of bring that emotionality out of people watching it and i think it was bang on the oscar was very well deserved no it wasn't and the i mean maybe in isolation as a, like an album you could even listen to it but obviously not really disney songs aren't meant for that other disney movies did it better the songs in aladdin are much better because of all the fun aspect of genie and stuff Dude, Disney movies of the past, like Aladdin, where there was such a fun element to the songs because of genie and there was actually a lot of culture there as well. And then future Disney movies, I think Frozen did it better. At least it had one catchy song. When John Favreau, which we should address by the way, he's going to make a Lion King remake in live action, similar to how he made the Jungle Book in live action. I'm sure that'll be awesome. I'm sure he'll give it some time to stew. He might use the same songs and redo them, sing them live in a better way. That would be so much better. Right now, it's just like. Like that stupid song. Can you feel the love tonight when the lions are about to bang? Best Oscar song. That's the song that won the Oscar. Yeah, three of these, three of the songs from this movie were nominated for best Os- best song. And can you feel the love tonight? One. We are going to fuck tonight. <laughs> That's the song. <laughs> That's the whole song. It's a great song, dude. It's a great score. It's great music. I don't know why you're hating, dude. Can we move on from this? It was fun to play together. This in my mind was a concession by you, and I'm appalled right now. Have you no heart with her? Have you none of that heart? It means no worries for the rest of your days. Are you snapping your fingers? Can you stop it's it? It's a problem-free philosophy. Hakuna Matata. You have to do the nasal voice. You can't do it without the nasal voice. Hakuna Matata, yar, with her. Just Hakuna Matata, bro. Just... An African phrase that now everybody in the world knows. They should go on the route of Madagascar and just use like modern pop songs, like Katy Perry's. Roar and uh, fireworks. You're you're digging your own grave right now. No, you... I'm not. It's better than this stupid like ballad. I have this on record now, forever and ever, where Katy Perry's roar and fireworks are like preferred. What's with the accent? I'm just gonna clip this part and make you go through hell your entire life. Okay, you know what? Let's just use the songs as a way to transition into talking about the actual movie, non-song part of the movie, which. is obviously at least bearable as opposed to the songs part of it the opening number circle of life can you sing can you just tell me the lyrics what's happening in this premise setting song vikram the antelopes and the elephants and the animals of the uh, jungle the savanna are bowing to their king back to logic again it's a cartoon to- bro they're paying homage to their king they're paying homage to their future eater they're paying homage to their predator I mean, they don't show him as that. It is he's more of a caretaker of. Uh, What do you mean? Mufasa justifies the circle of life by saying, "Oh, when we die, we become grass. The antelopes eat the grass, and we eat the antelopes." Yeah, except when the antelopes eat the grass, it's not screaming and being dragged by the neck into a cave and bleeding to death, while like annoying brats and cubs like Simba just be like, "Oh, I want the leg piece." Dude, this is okay? not. This is not National Geographic, dude. It's the Lion King, man. Easy. PG, trying, brother. PG. They're trying to make a National Geographic. And by the way, Mufasa becomes a star if you didn't notice. So exactly, he's not part of this circle of life. Yeah, Even when he's he... above it, he's the ruler of the life of circle thing. Well, shut up, man. Just Why? shut up. Because in storybooks, they say lion is the king of the jungle. They literally took a nursery rhyme and made it into a movie that you're now defending the logic of. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. Oh, more. A wimbo, Wait, a wimbo. This, this podcast on, is you, not going to go. You want to sing it with me? A wimbo. A no, wimbo. I don't. Come on, because I want this podcast to be published, and we're just going to get copyright struck <laughs> like nine times in this episode, basically. Worth it. So let's just 
talk about this act 1 of the movie after the circle of life right i think act 1 probably goes all the way till good old mufasa dying let's just call this act the death of mufasa ooh i like it i'm i'm going to give you one concession okay you talked about the voice acting james earl jones good old darth vader as mufasa he's like the perfect father voice of all time man it's a little bit too much i actually didn't enjoy it in most places but just knowing that that's basically darth vader saying all these fatherly Can't things can get better can get better yeah get it vader the father the good father yeah, it's like, like he's the father of all voice acting it, quite literally yeah well well done i see what you did there <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like vader having redemption and getting to be a father that's what i enjoyed the most about it apart from uh, james earl jones i think bufasa's character as well the way they established it how you know how he is the king of the jungle rather than just like theoretically the king of the jungle how he protects his kingdom you know operationally how it's set up you know zazu coming and giving updates and operationally. stuff operationally i love it dude i loved everything about this movie the only thing he's protecting is young simba cuz he's such a brat and gets into trouble all the time and has that annoying nasal voice it's like dad dad is all of this mine it's like yeah it's going to be yours. he's like hey all of it's mine by the way that little part is that not mine It's like, it's like, yeah, just stay away from that part. It's like, oh, good. Then I'm going to go there. What an idiot, dude! I totally related to that. Jesus. I would always do something that I was not told to do. It was just the most fun thing I could think of. Man, like uh, Mufasa needed to learn how to be a bit more of a helicopter parent, dude. He can't just let his kids go to like the badlands just like this. Bad I mean, parenting. He, he finds out just in time. Good king, bad parent. Is that a play on Kendrick Lamar's album? <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so. Anyway, they go to the Badlands. What were they called? I don't know. The Elephant Graves, I think. Elephant Graves, the Hyena Land, basically. Yeah, let's call it Hyena Land. And that's where they meet Ed, Ed and Eddie. Oh my God! Owape Goldberg and Cheech Marin. Oh my God! Oh my God! The Hyenas were amazing. Oh my God! What about the third one, who's like a full frittata? The third one is the most recognized voice actor in this movie, just by the way. Who? Pat Cummings. I don't know who that is. Yeah, because you don't know that, shit. That proves your point wrong. No, that proves your. stupidity the, the, the third one he was saying anything the yeah. third one is a frittata like full power his eyes are just like wobbly the, and he can't the third react. one is playing a frittata he plays a frittata very very well and he also has a he has multiple small roles within the movie because he's a very well established voice actor to have them as like the little like uh, cronies of the eventual villain scar which we'll talk about in a moment it was just kind of stupid just again like they're hyenas so they're laughing all the time Get it? What do you learn about hyenas in nursery books? That they laugh. What do you learn about lions? That they're kings. Oh my god, the hyenas are laughing all the time. Yeah, that's the whole point, man. I mean, just imagine what the direct target audience of this movie is. It's supposed to be kids, and this movie is so good and emotionally so well fleshed out that it appeals to adults as well. So, yeah, so what? Yeah, but little things just started pissing me off even in act 1. Like, you know the hyenas catch Zazu. Zazu, my man, dude. Rowan Atkinson, dude. Rowan Atkinson was fun. I think a little underutilized at Zazu. If they'd actually gone full Rowan Atkinson the way Robin Williams was allowed to be in Genie, then that would be fun. This was just any other guy. But then there wasn't enough room in the script for that, right? Genie was because it was too short. No, because there were so many important characters. Yeah. Okay. How can Zazu the bird be the only one who gets caught by the hyenas? Just dumb things like that just started pissing me off. And then of course Simba just shows up out of nowhere. It was like Game of Thrones season 7, bro. It's just like, "Oh, you said all praise, this time." Dude, that's high praise. No, no, no it's not. <laughs> We can have a whole different argument and feud there. But characters is magically show up wherever they need to. Like on one hand there's a lot of distance on another hand. Anyway, I'm getting caught up in my nitpicks here. Can we talk about some broader main points that are important in this whole premise building portion of the movie? Yes, please. Do you realize how lions and their prides work? There's again, a are, are we going down the logic route again? This is actually confirmed by the director. Okay. There's usually one male lion in a pride. Right. A bunch of lionesses who, who hunt. hunt. Yeah. And that part they actually alluded to, right? right? Because when Scar becomes a king, like the lionesses hunt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, how do you think the lionesses have their cubs? Where do they find the mate? It's the one male lion. Right. Are you following me so far? So, are you saying that Simba and Nala are step siblings? Yes. Do you think they give a shit? They should. No, they shouldn't. They're animals, wild animals. That means Simba is also the product of incest. Yes, that explains so much because he is a dumb f- in this movie. I mean, I don't know what to say to you, dude. That's that's how animals work. Sorry for bursting your bubble. That's how animals work. You also want... now you want to go back to how animals actually work. You well, brought it up. I'm I'm fine with them being step sisters or step brothers or whatever. 
they seem to have child marriage in They're the savanna. They're not savannah. humans. Child marriage? They do. do you think they get married? They, they, she, she said, Zazu said she's his betrothed. Yeah. So, child ma- on one hand incest, Whether on you're, one hand child you're, you're marriage. You're shuffling very rapidly between logic and no logic. So are you. No, I'm just trying to humor you. You're just saying you. incest is normal in the savannah. On one hand, they've been humanized. On the other hand, it's like incest. What's that about? What do you want, man? I don't get it. I want a coherent movie. I want something on par with... You want you want a ch- children's movie to address child marriage, incest. Um, no, just don't bring it up. Okay, fine. The no incest one is subtle. The incest you is brought subtle. it up. The movie did not bring this up. They bring up child marriage for sure. No. Simba and Nala are betrothed. They're betrothed, but that doesn't mean that they're getting married when they're children. They're betrothed to be married when they're adults. Yeah, that's chi- that's what child marriage is also. That's a part of child marriage. No. That's not cool either, Vikram. Stop bringing this into it. I don't know why you're bringing this into it. The movie did not raise any of these stupid ass issues. Can we just move on from this ridiculousness into the most emotional scene in this movie? Is it when I cried because it was over? No, that's not a scene, firstly. And uh, I'm talking about Mufasa's very tragic demise. Mm, that did affect me a lot as a kid. And I shudder to think about all the kids that have learned about death through this movie. Death of their father, dude. Imagine like just the primal emotions this movie elicits man such a contrived hacky way to elicit emotion dad dad wake up dan dan wake up that's so messed up man you can't just show like a kid trying to wake up his dead father that's like that's just easy tear jerking not cool no man and then and then obviously the snake scar just just like slithering in in his lion form and then just just convincing simba to run away it's just there's okay. so many angles that this scene plays at before we talk about Mufasa's death, and it, it's not exactly a concession, but it did affect me a lot as a kid. And the whole scene when he's falling off the cliff with his arms up in the air, that really stays with me. Like, you know, it, it's 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 somewhere between that and Sophie having to choose and Sophie's choice. I think I like the top scenes that have affected me in cinema. Just when I watch them, not in this viewing for sure. But let's talk about Scar. What a tragic figure, firstly. Again, what casting, dude. Good old Jeremy Irons. Dude, but you know, they, they they wrote this completely different, as in they, the character, they'd written it completely different, not expecting Jeremy Irons to be cast in it. And Irons had just done a movie before this where he'd played this very emotional character, very, um, you know, deep and dark. And they saw that and then they spoke to Irons and they were so convinced in terms of changing the characterization of Scar that they completely modeled it around Irons and job well done, dude. Sinister I... as, sinister as frick. A little too sinister, a little too like, I'm evil. He's basically like Jafar except a lion, right? Jafar from Aladdin. And so there's no there's no layers to him. Except if you dig really deep to find the layers. And that's why I call him a tragic figure. Did you think about the fact that his name is Scar? And he has a scar? That's so messed up. I would I would feel that he ha- his name is Scar because he has a scar. Well, what is it? Is it a nickname? Did he get it after the scar? So maybe maybe he got it in, in childhood. Maybe Mufasa did that to him. Actually, apparently, the subtle understanding is that Mufasa probably did do that to him because Mufasa was so much stronger. But to call him Scar is messed up. That's like if you like injure your leg for life and then your nickname becomes Gimpy. That's like if you uh, injure your nose as a child and uh, for the rest of your life, everybody calls you Shoot Pranaka. <laughs> I'm so impressed you know that, by the way. I had no expectation about that. I dug deep for that one, I have to admit. I felt it, dude. Secondly, Vidur. That's a tragedy. Us, humans. Uh Uh-huh. Them, cartoon lions. Convenient. Convenient again. Okay, but he's a tragic figure. That sucks. If he's been called Scar, I got a lot from his backstory just from that point alone. And as for Jeremy Irons' voice acting, I thought it was over the top, too villainous, too evil, too one-dimensional a character, and the voice acting corresponds. Except for this one line where he really got me, when he's manipulating Simba into going into the elephant grave to begin with, when he's saying that, oh, I can't tell you what's in there. And he just goes, I'm sorry, Simba, I can't tell you. I'm obviously not doing it as as good as him. That just really got me. Like his manipulation voice was really strong. And I think it was a perfect pairing to James Earl Jones' Mufasa, right? Like they they did seem like two brothers in terms of the the voice casting. Another thing that I noticed, this very small tidbit uh, that I noticed, I'm sure you did too, in terms of how they showed Scar, did you notice that whenever they did, whenever Scar was in a scene, he was almost always in a shadow? 
Mm. He wasn't there in the sunlight, so that was just that subtextual depiction that he's he's dark and he's a antagonist and the negative character. I think that was all of these sub all of these tones are very well played out in the movie. Come on, dude, that's like filmmaking one hundred and one. Everybody does that. That's what you pay a cinematographer for. That's the, like but standard. all of that within a kids movie, man. I, I think it's still pretty impressive. It wasn't very heavy handed or anything like that. So they pulled off all of these elements, brought them together very very well. <sighs> <laughs> Simba, <laughs> Scar. <sighs> that would have been better. Oh, I can't, I can't not acknowledge a Star Wars reference. But no, it wouldn't. Not in this movie. Come on, man. Okay, why don't we just get to the part where Vader slash Mufasa dies? Sad, already granted. Sad scene. A little too on the nose, tuggy. Test so good, man. Tasso gaya. Huh. Oh, so sweet ta. Yeah. Why didn't Simba just run to the side in the stampede? By the way. Yeah, nee akal bache me bro. Like why didn't Mufasa run to the side? He tried, I think. He tried his ass off to get to stay alive, man. And just like a herd of what animals were those? Uh, I think they're uh, wildebeests. Wildebeests. Yeah. I thought that was like a generic term for animals, no? <laughs> like wild beasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a rampaging wildebeest. He tried to get out of the way. Okay, so he dies. And we get to Act Two, where Simba is convinced by Scar to just run away and never come back. Why didn't Scar kill him? By the way, Scar had no problem killing Mufasa, though indirectly, but then also directly off the cliff. Why did he send his hyenas to kill him? Anyway, typical standard movie villain stuff. Simba escapes. Here's the part where the movie is so short and it works against it. He's immediately found by Timon and Pumbaa. Within like a minute or two of Timon and Pumbaa's like character building, they're singing Hakuna Matata. I'm like, bro, your dad just died in like this scene. It wasn't. It wasn't the same scene. Firstly, and secondly, dude, a quick shout out to Nathan Lane. I mean, what a performance, dude! And according to me, I know a lot of people don't think so, but according to me, the best casting of the movie, the best character in the movie. It's just so amazing what that guy does with such little screen time. Can we just get done with you just freaking out over the voice acting and the performances? Are you done? Do you have? Are you fond of Rafiki's performance as well? Mm. Nala's performance as well? No. Okay, good. Nathan shout Lane. To, Nathan Lane, dude, you can't deny that. Come on. Shout out to Nathan Lane. Maybe move on. Things are not Hakuna Matata, bro. Stop singing Hakuna Matata. You just ran away. And then within that Hakuna Matata song, he just grows up to be Junior Mufasa. They spent so much time on uh, Young Simba, man. It. It completely made sense. It's, it's not like they rushed through Young Simba's life or anything like that. They showed his motives, his reasons for running. They showed what his past is like and what that, how that would further influence his future. So makes sense. What's wrong with that? Yeah, but you should focus on Act Two, right? Where he's lonely and is he's in despair, and there's like it's like ten minutes of movie time between Simba running away and Nala finding him. That takes away the emotional core of the movie. Perfect pacing. <laughs> No, it's not. This is like if in the Prince of Egypt, Moses went away, he left Egypt, and then within 10 minutes, he was back. What would that have done? That would have taken away the whole Old Testament story. No, that's, the crux of that story is during that part of the, the story. So it's completely different for this. The crux of this story is the beginning and the end. And how the beginning and the end come together. How Nala ends up finding Simba just by chance because they think he's dead. And then basically just pounces on him, like ready to make out, ready to go. She just finds him and immediately she's like, you know, neck nuzzling, whatever the lion equivalent of making out it. Yeah. What's up? How you been? Why are you here? What's happening? No, bro. She saves all that for later. She just makes those like, uh, you know, just seductive lioness eyes and then that's it. We are going to bone tonight. Dude, I don't know what the hell your problem is, dude. This movie's a f- cartoon at the end of the day, dude. You need to keep that in mind. And yet, it touches so many strings emotionally. It's perfect. I, I think it's the perfect blend of young adult fantasy, adult... You know what? Shut, shut up, man. Do you remember what gets Simba to come back? Like, how quickly Act 2 gets over with? Do you remember the element that makes Simba actually go back to the Pride Lands? Yeah. What is it? Him actually realizing that Mufasa is within him. No, it's not talking to Mufasa in the clouds. That's what I thought you would say. The key element actually is Rafiki, the baboon. Yeah. The magical baboon, by the way. He's the, uh, what do you call it? Shaman. Shaman. 
No, he's a hokum pokum magical monkey. <laughs> okay, and things were bad enough as it is. We didn't need some like uh, guru magical monkey. Dude, he guru. rips that fruit apart and like shit happens, dude. Ah, Simba! Oh, oh, ha, 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 ha. Racist. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't you dare! Don't you dare throw that at me. So. It is because of Rafiki, but it's not directly because of what Rafiki did. It's Rafiki taking him to that, or taking him to that realization that Mufasa is with him and Mufasa is is around him and he's a part of him, and therefore it's his responsibility to return to his pride and his kingdom. Black Panther did it better. Black Panther did what better? The whole like connecting with my father and the spirit. Yeah, plane. like all of the all of the panthers sitting on a tree just coming down and like that's the weakest part of Black Panther. Please don't bring it up. Okay, so Simba goes back to the Pride Lands alone at the time, races through the desert. What's his plan, Vikram? What's his plan of action once he goes back? He's a lion, dude. He's like king solo guy. He's like I'm just gonna whoop anyone who comes in front of me, dude. No, I... he's like gonna roar his troubles away. Roar. Your favorite song, by the way. <laughs> by Katy Perry. Shout out to Katy Perry. His whole plan is to just challenge Scar and just hope for the best, I guess. Yeah. What else? Do you think he's going to set up his army, draw battle plans? He's like, you come here, attack me, I'll flank you, you'll get out of there, and then we'll win. He's a lion, dude. He goes head on. That's what they do. Okay. And then he's joined by Nala and Timon and Pumbaa. And then he's joined by Nala and Timon and Pumbaa. And then they get into, again, a very rushed act three, where they just, take on like you know simba takes on scar and timon and pumba take on all the hyenas and nala gathers the lionesses so then what does scar do scar's whole thing was that he would basically manipulate and use his evil and his mind to get what he wants but at the end of the day after he convinces all the other lionesses that simba was responsible for killing mufasa simba just kind of gets over it he reveals to simba that i killed mufasa simba just gets the one up on him And then Scar fights him physically, lion on lion. That's so dumb. That's exactly what he said he didn't want to do with Mufasa. The whole good part of Scar till now is that he knew he had no strength. You know what it reminded me of? You know the end of John Wick where they're talking about John Wick as being like this crazy assassin, but in the end, the villain who's been scheming the whole time actually fights him one on one, even though they're totally unmatched. Like, where is the tension between Scar fighting Simba? Obviously, Scar's going to lose. Yeah, but then that's a last resort for Scar. He tries everything before that, convincing the pride that Simba was responsible for Mufasa's death, trying to turn the hyenas against him. He tried everything, and when all else failed, he also tried to like ambush him and then do the same thing that he did to Mufasa. And obviously, he's the he's the villain, so he's going to reveal his plan before he's going to kill his main enemy. And that doesn't work out. He has no choice but to fight him, so he fights him. You know what would have been much better if, like, in Mohra, the '90s Bollywood movie, the villain, even though he looked weaker. Like Nasruddin Shah did relative to Akshay Kumar and Sunil Chetty, turn out to be a badass fighter and just whoop the protagonist's ass the way Nasruddin Shah does unexpectedly. Everyone who's listening to the show hates you right now. <laughs> just absolutely hates you. Firstly, for bringing up Shout Mora. Shout out to Mora. Firstly, Shout for bringing up Mora. Mora. Secondly, for trying to say that Scar should have killed or or beaten, held his own, held his own. Does that mean he wins? No, obviously oh. not. Oh, so so It's close a fight. Movie. Yeah. Stupid ass point. And in the end, he gets taken by Ed, Ed, and Eddie. You remember when that happened in Justice League? It was so annoying. It's the same thing. I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't even want to. My least favorite part of the whole thing is Rafiki joins the fight at one point, and then he goes like full kung fu. It's like kung fu Rafiki. They should have made that into a movie. It would have done well, as evidenced by. Aren't you? Aren't you right to Disney? Well, Kung Fu Panda already did it. Oh, okay. But it, it had potential. If they had to make sequels and spin-offs the way they did. That's the one they should have made. Kung Fu Rafiki. Kung Fu Rafiki. Kung Fu Baboon. I'd watch it. I'd watch it. Not lying. You'd watch anything, as is evidenced by the fact that you like this movie. That's not fair. You know the thing that I liked about this movie the most, uh, which we haven't spoken about, is the animation, dude. Isn't hand-drawn animation like way, way better than computer animation? No, you like this movie more than Pixar movies. Yeah, dude. It's it's the authenticity that it provides. It actually makes me feel. Nicer, if that makes sense to you. I know Are you it saying won't. you're not looking forward to the live-action remake of this movie? Not as much as I would have had for the Jungle Book because Come on. I wasn't a big fan of the Jungle Book cartoons that much. It has the same animation. Yeah, but I, like just the story and all of that. So I, I liked what they did with the Jungle Book. I mean, who's to say the Lion King is good? They have they have a good story to go off of. So I can totally imagine that. But it's just evidence in terms of how much money this movie made. Yeah, it kind of killed it, didn't it? Dude, killed it, and uh, was the highest. Is still the highest-grossing 
hand drawn animation movie of all time it will never be surpassed because they've stopped making it partly and the other thing is that because of how much tickets were priced at those, those times and stuff in terms of pure attendance or the pure number of people that saw this movie the highest out there ever no movie has sold more tickets than the lion king why not i mean i believe that pretty crazy how much money it made but every animated movie makes money if you look right now especially the power of disney this was in the middle of disney's renaissance era with the little mermaid and aladdin and others so they were on a roll there animated movies they meant for kids you have to sell one ticket to sell four tickets right you sell the ticket to a kid the the parents will go out and watch the whole movie so this was we, part of this was part of the renaissance era but at uh, the beginning of it the renaissance era started like 89 and i remember uh, the movie before this i'm not sure which one it was was the highest grossing movie of all time animated movie and then this surpassed it but no movie after this surpassed what lion king made so that's testament in terms of how good it is that's just testament to disney being our overlord the way they pushed the monarchy sister no toy story bow didn't make as much bow to me and my toys bow to me toy story didn't make as much money as this movie did toy story was a new story a new animation they didn't have the disney's king's powers of distribution you know i'm right Bow no. to Disney. No. You're just you're just a peasant that bows to Disney, man. You worked up. I have some advice for you. Just Hakuna Matata, bro. Please, Hakuna Matata. It means no worries for the rest of your days. Stop snapping. How do you say? 